this is into the fire. I'd like to welcome to Into the Fire, the incredibly talented, the guy with the most amazing bull skills, Jerome, don't bother defending me, Handel Randall. Nice to meet you, Jerome. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you interviewing me today. Thank you. I'm super excited. It is well documented that you had a tough upbringing and things weren't easy for you. Did this give you the drive to be the amazing player you are now? Yes, I, I, I definitely had a tough upbringing, but, you know, um, I didn't make an excuse you know, for having a tough upbringing. I wanted to make sure that I got out of there. You know, I did the right thing for my little brothers so they can have someone to look up to and, you know, uh, someone for my mother to be proud of. So, you know, I always stay focused. I know what I wanted and, um, and I just strive for it. Yeah, you're pretty good. How you have never been in the NBA is, um, is mind blowing. Did any team say why? Because it's ridiculous in my eyes. Um. When I was with the Dallas Mavericks for a little while in preseason, and they really couldn't tell me why. Um, it's just a numbers game. Sometimes it's timing, but I think um, when the time when I came out of college, they was worried too much about height. But you know, after Isaiah Thomas, you know, came to NBA, he started to do so well, and a lot of um, you know NBA guards started to be a lot smaller. So I guess it was just timing. Uh, I don't think the skill, it was the skills, but it was just timing. Yeah, that's that's not good. Turkey, China, Israel, America, Ukraine, Belgium, Lithuania, France, Germany, and Russia. You've played in more countries than most have visited. I hope you have a frequent flyer card. <laughs> I do not have a frequent flyer card, but uh, I probably should have. Uh, didn't even know about it when I was traveling so much, but um, yeah, I traveled all over the world, man. It's been great uh, just to play basketball and you know uh, just see all these different countries and just the different cultures and everything about it. Um, just the fact that I can just showcase my talent everywhere. You know, I'm happy about it and I'm pretty blessed. Yeah, it's pretty good. You have the ability to control the ball like it's attached to your hand. Your ball skills are beyond amazing. Name a player in the league with better handles. I bet you can't. In the NBL? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to put myself uh, before anyone. That's why I'm handled by Randall. All right, so I'm going to put myself before anybody. Okay. You run a program with kids. Free plug, Jerome. Yes, um, it's always been a pleasure of mine. Um, you know, it started with this lady when I was nine years old. When she took me from the south side of Chicago, and she helped me out. So, you know, my drive and, you know, my passion for kids come from, you know, 20, 22 years ago when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, I always want to give back and, and put a smile on kids' faces and teach them, you know, the things that I've learned over the years from being a professional. Yeah, it's a really good cause. Your pull-up shot is outstanding. It rarely misses. It's automatic. I even saw Harry Froling in the other game start to run back in defense as you shot it. One-on-one -on -one at the top, there is no one better. That's not a question, Randall. Just wanted to tell you how, how I'm in awe of your pull-up. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, being a small guard, um, you kind of want to pick and choose your battles when you're going up against, you know, 16, 6, 11 guys. So I think the pull-up shot is, is don't get enough credit, you know. So, you know, I live and die by it. It's, you know, it's my favorite shot, you know, just getting to that spot and, you know, knocking that shot down. Uh, I think it gives the defense uh, a bit of a, damn, he made that shot. So I'm, I'm happy that I worked on it a lot and I'm going to keep continuing to working on it. Yeah, it's a pretty hard shot. You played for California in college, finished your career as the all-time leader in scoring, gave them their first conference title since 1960, and won the Pac-10 conference medal. They must have loved Jerome Randall. Yeah, it was big. Um, didn't win you know, a title since 1967, and you know, here I come, a kid from Chicago, you know, who was probably not supposed to be that you know a lot of that stuff don't happen for kids you know from my area and from where I come from so you know for me to come from Chicago and go all the way out to California and do what I did you know broke a lot of records Jason Kidd records you know I was really happy about it but then it just came down to the hard work that I put in you know so I'm happy about that and, and I'm still going after 10 years so it's cool yeah I'd be happy about that too is it true they made a life-size statue of you, but some lady stole it by putting it in her handbag? No, I did not hear about that. You heard that? Uh, I don't know. 
No, I didn't hear about that. I don't know about that one. I don't know. <laughs> so, summer leagues with Orlando. Oh, Washington. I just, <laughs> I just caught on to it. <laughs> the lady put it in her handbag. Meaning I'm super short, right? Okay, yeah. I get it. Right? <laughs> so, summer leagues with Orlando, Washington, Dallas, Memphis, the Clippers and the Bucks. How close were you from getting that shot at the NBA? I was really close with the Clippers. Um, I play really well uh, in summer league. Um, so I don't know, man. Sometimes, like I said, it's a numbers game. It's, it's about timing. Um, most of the time, they already know who they want when you come into summer league. So you have to like play outstanding in order for you know to change their mind for them to sign you. So uh, I don't know if the you know the opportunity was really there, you know, with all the rest of the teams. But I had a big shot with um, with uh, the Clippers. Yeah. My opinion means nothing, but they were wrong not signing you. You, <laughs> you joined the Sixers, and in your first year in the NBL, you became an absolute crowd favourite, winning the MVP and taking the Sixers to the minor premiership. Being the competitor that you are, does that final loss drive you to get that elusive title? Yes, that was a tough time because we were really close, uh, but... You know, Illawarra that year had our number. They, you know, I think they had a mental um, edge on us a little bit. But, you know, we had a young team. Um, I look at that as, as a successful year because they picked us to, choo uh, to to finish eighth in the league that time, and we finished first, you know. So I was happy that, you know, we were able to, you know, get to that point with all the young guys that we had. Yeah, it was, it was great. You played two seasons with the Kings under Andrew Gaze and with the big man Andrew Bogut. What was it like playing with him? Um, it was cool. Um, he obviously done a lot of great things in his career, so um, it was good to play. But Andrew Gaze, uh, it was definitely uh, amazing to you know to play for him because you know he was obviously the you know arguably the greatest of all times here in Australia. So um, just to pick his brain on certain things, I don't think he got the fair shake that he should have, but. You know, I have a lot of respect for Andrew Gaze. You're now back at the Sixers and have already had two game winners. Pretty much sums you up. Is this the year the Sixers take home the title? Well, we have to get over a really tough hump right now. Um, you know, we had a stretch where we were playing good and we had a stretch where we wasn't playing so well. You know, but um, for the most part, I, I'm very confident that we can get in the top four. And once the top four is, you know, is achieved and, you know, we go into another season, you know, so... You know, I'm just focused on these last seven games and, you know, hopefully we can get it done. Yeah, I'm pretty confident you'll make it. A couple of questions on your team. Who would be the more scared? An umpire at Joey Wright's Christmas party or somebody hitting a game winner and seeing Jack McVeigh running at them? I say the Joey's Christmas party. Yeah. <laughs> Has Daniel Johnson ever introduced you to his imaginary friend? No, I didn't know that he had an imaginary friend. Maybe we should ask him about that. Yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, we should. Have you ever been lucky enough to have one of Ramon's world famous cheese Philly steaks? No, I don't think I would eat any of Ramon's food if he cook it. What's more likely to happen? You dunking on Harry Froling or Harry Froling stopping you one on one from the three point line? Me dunking on Harry Froling for sure. Yeah. Well, Jerome, you're the man, and I still believe the best player in the NBL. You play with passion and with your heart on your sleeve. I've got something for you, Jerome. When you make one of those big game-winning shots, it's into the fire. Do you want to have a try? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, nice. yeah, nice like ending. That? Yeah, I nice like ending. I like that. I like that. Well, I can't thank you enough, the pocket rocket. Adelaide 36 are Jerome the Handle Randall for going into the fire with me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.